Allison Hayslip here in New Jersey. Now, when you think of 3D action figures, the name Todd McFarlane should come to mind. He has been at the forefront of designing, creating, and manufacturing these since the mid-90s. And today we are getting an exclusive tour of McFarlane toys to see how these works of art are made. Spawned in 1994, McFarlane Toys is best known for producing a wide range of figurines that includes characters from comic books, video games, and even professional athletes. With their unique style and attention to detail, McFarlane Toys has established itself as one of the world's premier toy manufacturing companies. So how many people do you have working at this company? Uh, well, at this office, we have 50. It, it takes a lot of people to put these together. There's a lot of different steps in the process. You want to catch, capture the essence of the character itself. What sort of technology do you use to get all these details in here? Ah, well, we can simply use the old type tools or we actually have scanning equipment that can help us get to that point even a little faster. Steve, what is this? This is a 3D scanner. A person stands on the platform, strikes the pose that they want to be scanned in. Somebody hits a button, the heads move down, takes about 15 seconds. Would you like to uh, try a scan? Yes. Once my body is scanned and the imprint is processed, it's sent off to a state-of-the-art 3D printer where a resin copy is made. So this is the 3D printer. The machine actually lays down material six ten thousandths of an inch in thickness at a time. It will produce your image, your body, head and body, out on the plate in a um, 3D mode. So what are we building now? Uh, right now there's actually a halo head. You can see it's building layer at a time. It's building up. Now this particular helmet is seven pieces. Uh, and that's what we've got laid out on the table right now. That's what it's printed. The resin copy is then used to fashion a silicone mold from which the master urethane figure is created. So we made it to our final stop. Paint. Paint. Are all your pieces hand painted? Pretty much. Wow. There's a lot of different types of applications they use. For broader areas, they use what they call mask painting. And they'll actually make copper masks that cover areas and leave other areas open and they'll spray paint like that. Mm. But when it comes to the fine details, a lot of the fine details are actually done by hand. Well, I never knew so much intricate work went into crafting these action figures. I can't wait to see how mine turns out, but uh, I hope I'm a bit better looking than this guy. So what are you going to do with that? I mean, that's made of resin, right? So yes. you can't you can't paint it. You have to have like a mold right, made right, of it. Right, right, right. The mold has to be made out of this one, and then they make a urethane copy of this. So what are the plans for this? Paint. You can turn it into an ornament? Or um, I might leave it, it on our president's desk so he thinks of oh. me fondly all the time. There we or, go. Or I look like I'm kicking his ass all the time. I'm not quite sure. Oh. One right? of the two. Wait, look, we have we have one of my head as well. Okay, See? that's not creepy at all. No, not at all. why the disembodied because head? What's the purpose there? They have there? a different scanner for faces because this one gets more detail, more detail in the okay. face. Okay. So basically, what they would do—I mean, obviously the sizes aren't correct on this—but they would do a body scan and then they would take the head and attach it on there. More but bed. That but that's means cool I have nonetheless. A giant yeah. head. Well done, Hazel. But it's so sweet. I'm kicking ass. <laughs> You're kicking your own head, actually. I know.